Today, we're, uh, we're doing the kinos uh, in, in, in an empty shul. Um, and uh, hopefully, we're all able to, to, in some way, virtually be together, to be misabel, to mourn over the Churban Abayas, to mourn over the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. I'll take a minute just to, to introduce you to the format this morning which is going to be similar to ways we've done it and structured things in the past. Uh, so in order to facilitate the kinos we're gonna be using, you'll have available on the screen, uh, uh, you know, the kinos that we're going to be saying. We're not actually, we'll be, we'll be uh, moving around a little bit with some of the different uh, ones we're gonna be starting. Ultimately, we're gonna be starting when we get to it to Zachar Asher Asad Sar which is Kina number, um, number nine, I think. Excuse me one second. Which one is it? Not on this list. She was on this list. Okay, page 31, uh, number 16. Thank you. Thank you for finding that. Um, so, we're going to be doing a number of keynotes. We're going to be doing Bezos Hashem, 10 keynotes, uh, divided up over the morning. We're going to be talking in between in order to be able to have an enhanced appreciation of what it is, of course, that we're crying over. And as in past years, we're going to be framing our discussion in and around a personality. Uh, a personality who was associated with churban, with destruction, and with binyan, and with reconstruction in our own time. Uh, we've taken to this mode of doing the kinos around the person for the past many years. Uh, it has its own, there are many ways, of course, to do kinos. And uh, this, this one seems to have its own value, has its own value on one level, because we say that the death of the righteous is like the burning of the Beis Hamikdash. When we see a person, when we have the chance to see and to live with a person whose life exemplifies the presence of Hashem, whose life is lived according to every value that we strive for, it helps us. Hechal Hashem Hema. We ourselves are supposed to be in that same mode. We are supposed to be not just building a nice building for the presence of Hashem, but building ourselves, so that Hashem could be in our midst. And we also get to see, by looking at the life of a personality, we get to see an example of someone who really knew how to cry and know how to translate those tears into action. For the first kina, for the first two kinos that we're going, to be, we're going to be doing, I would like to really focus on the Beis HaMikdash, on the Beis HaMikdash itself, the core element of mourning, which we have on Tisha B'Av. You know that the um, The Beis HaMikdash was a place which we built in the midst of the Jewish people, in the center of Kal Yisrael, where Hashem came to reside, where Hashem could make himself at home. It's strange, it's hard to understand. Shlomo HaMelech posed the philosophical question. When he built the Beis HaMikdash, 
how could we build a home for you? The heavens, the heavens and the uppermost heavens, the greatest spheres, they would not be able to contain you. They would not be able to, to, to hold you. Afki Habayas has this house. But Hashem wants to come. He wants to be in our midst. He wants to be in our midst when he can feel at home in our midst, when he can feel welcome in our midst. And the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash is when HaKadosh Baruch, when Hashem says, like he said before, like he said when we first turned away from him at the time of the Eil Hazor, the golden calf, and he said, I'm not comfortable in your midst. I can't be there in your midst. That's our world. Our world where HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't feel at home. Our world where our relationship with the service of Hashem is where we're constantly turning to Hashem and asking for things. We daven. When we daven well, when we feel like we daven well, we say we've, we've connected to Hashem to ask Him for what's really on our minds. We ask Hashem for things. It's very different than avoda in the Beis HaMikdash. Avodah is when we served Him, when we welcomed Him into our midst. When we did for Him, instead of asking Him constantly to do for us. And today on Tisha B'Av, we mourn the destruction of both Batei and Dashas. We mourn a world where Hashem isn't welcome. Imagine the Beis HaMikdash. Imagine that place that loomed above Yerushalayim, where everyone came. The Jewish people flocked on the real Moadim, on the true festivals. When the Jewish people flocked from all the corners of the land to come to see the face of Hashem and to be seen by the presence of Hashem. The place where Beisi Beis Tfilo Yikorei L'chol Ha'amim Hashem's Migdash was so visibly clear that he was at home amongst the Jewish people, that this was the place of his holiness, that everyone in the world would pray via the Beis HaMikdash. They would all recognize that this was the center of the world and the pathway to which prayers would ascend to Hashem. Imagine a world where Hashem feels at home. Imagine a world where we can have that rich base on English, that center of the service Hashem, of Hashem, the Shara Shamayim, the gateway to heaven. That's why all that. There's a famous story about the Pana Vizhurah. We have shared this story together in Shul many times. We've shared the story in our own home, around our Seder table dozens of times. It's a story of the Panavish Yerov on one of his travels. He traveled. He traveled before the Holocaust. He traveled when he was a Yerov in Panavish. But this is a story of one of his travels from Eretz Yisrael after the war. When he was traveling to find, to meet the Platon survivors. When he traveled to Rome, in Italy, there were many. The Panavish Rav himself, as we'll see later, came via Italy to Teret Yisrael. But he came to Rome. And the way the story is told, he arrived, he arrived at the place where he would stay, and he asked the host, he asked his host, he says, please, I want to go out now. I want you to take me out. The host was astounded. He said, you just arrived. It's late at night. It's pouring rain. We're not going to do anything tonight. I can't take you anywhere real time. He says, I want you to take me out now. And the man of course acceded to the Panavizhurov's request. And they got into the car and the Panavizhurov said, please take me to the Arch of Titus. Titus. The Arch of Titus, which is in in the midst of Rome, the Arch of Titus, which has on it a depiction of Titus bringing back the Kalim, bringing back the, 
vessels of the base Hamikdash after its conquest. A picture of the menorah and the caleb and the various vessels of the base Hamikdash. A huge arch, an ancient arch that was built to celebrate the triumph, that was built to celebrate our destruction. And the Panavisharov got out of the car, walked up to the Arch of Titus. He was a distinguished man. He straightened his frock, his coat, and his hat. And he stood and he said, Titus, Titus, we're still here. Where are you? What's become of you? We're still here. It's a story It's a story which speaks of Netzach Yisrael, of the eternity of the Jewish people. Those who trampled us were trampled. Those who swallowed us up were rendered distant, far away. But Kal Yisrael remains. And Kal Yisrael has Netzach Yisrael, it remains, remains home, and it remains together. I want to read to you a little bit of the Gemara of Titus and his destruction of the Vesa English so we could feel it a little bit. And if it's okay, I want to add something into this Gemara in a homiletic fashion. What I'm saying is not an interpretation of the Gemara. I'll read you the Gemara straight. But I want to say to you a drush because we're here about the Panavijarov. That story that I just told you, that I just shared with you, is a story which is, I, don't know, I find it the most beautiful story. But it's a story which conveys the person, the chutzpah, the strength, the personality, to go out there. I have to go. I have to face down the, the machrif and tell them that we're going to survive. Panavijra was a magnificent personality. You could still meet people who knew him, who met him. Mention to someone, ask someone about the Panavijra, and a look comes over their face. He was such a, I never had this chus, I never had the privilege to, to meet him. But I have had this chus to meet many who did. I know my own father was a friend of Racha, who was a, not a hero worshiper. He was a very, very careful person. Every year there was a yeshiva. The Adelphia yeshiva used to send, as a fundraiser, they used to send, some of you may remember this, they would send an eight by 10 picture of a little of Israel. They sent it, you know, some places sent the calendar. Some places sent the uh, Haraisas. You know, they sent a picture of a, of a, of a girl. And uh, my father would get them and they would go in the door. There was one picture which he put up in his office. And that was the fun of his roof. And like for men, the fun of his roof represented hope, rebirth. Titus, where are you? Ozal Sharbe Latitus, Vespasian, Aspasianus. Now the king sent Titus to go and to destroy the base of English. We say in Hasidu, they will say, Where is their God, the rock in whom they trusted? Zet Titus Sarosh. This refers to the evil Titus, Shechire Fegide Klape Mal, that he blasphemed and he cursed. Towards the Rabona Shalom. Ma'asa, what did he do? Tafas Zaina Biyadai. He took a woman, a woman of ill repute, Benichnas Labes Kotche Akadoshin, and he went into the Holy of Holies. 
the Yitzia Sefer Torah of Amr Allah Aver, and he spread a Sefer Torah on Aver. And there, on it, he did Aver, he did an immoral act. But not all Saif, the Gider is Haparaisis. He took a sword and he cut in, he stabbed the Paraychis, the curtain, the Nasanis, and a miracle happened. And bled. Blood came from the Paraychis because Sobor Horagis Atzman and Titus thought to himself, I killed God. As it says, your enemies roared in the midst of your meeting place. They took their symbols as meaningful symbols. said, Who is like you, the strong one? Who is like you, so strong and tough? You hear the blasphemy of that wicked person and you're quiet. Hashem could have nuked him, knocked him out in a second. Kodesh Baruch Hu was quiet. The world is one where Hashem is quiet. His home is empty. Micha mocha ba'edim Hashem. We said at the Yamsuf, B'tseisi mi Mitzrayim, who is like you amongst the mighty Hashem? And now we say, Micha mocha ba'ilmim, who is like you, mute, quiet, silence. Hashem just took it. You let him do it. He moved out of his house. It's an empty house now. You destroyed something which was already a shell, which was already destroyed. Ma'asa, what did Titus do? Not tell us He took that curtain, huge curtain, floor to ceiling of the Megdash, the Asaik of Ingar Husni. He made it like a big basket. The heavy kol kelim shem amigdash. He brought all the precious utensils of the base amigdash. The imicham vahem. He threw them into this big sheet, this big blanket, and he wrapped it up by shivam v'sfina, and he put it in a boat leilich lishtabeach ira to go and to boast in his city in Rome, where those kelim still sit, where those utensils of the amigdash still sit until this day. As it says, They will take pride in the city for what it is that they have done. So he's traveling, and he's traveling to Rome with the Caleb of the base of English. This sea couldn't take it. And the sea became stormy. And a wave of the ocean stood to drown him, to, top, to topple the boat. Omar, he said, It seems to me that the God of the Jews, he only knows how to fight on the water. All of his enemies, Paro, Sisra, he drowns them in the sea. Me too. In Gibor Huyal if he's really strong, let him come onto the dry land and wage war with him. Yotu Sabasko Amaloi, a heavenly voice came out and said to him, Russia, then Russia, then the Naisha Lace of Russia. You are a wicked person, the son of a wicked person, a grandson of the wicked Asaf. Very I have a little tiny creature in my world that's a mosquito. It's, it, it can't live long, it doesn't expel its waste. Go ahead, go to the dry land. Fight with my mosquito. Oh, my gosh. They landed. Boyatush, the Nichnas Bechaitway, the Nakar, the Mechay Shevashan. 
And it says the mosquito, the mosquito came and went up the nostril of, of Titus and lodged itself in his brain. And it bothered him for seven years. One day, Titus was walking past a blacksmith shop. Shoma Kolar Zafta, and there was banging going on in the blacksmith shop, the blacksmith's hammer. Ishtik, and the mosquito stopped, stopped buzzing in its head. Amr, he says, I have a solution. I have a solution. It doesn't, you know, when there's a hammer going, it stops. So he hired people, or he appointed people, Every day he had blacksmiths banging in front of him. And that was better for him than the bug that was buzzing in his brain. The Gemara tells how, how much he would pay them. He would pay a Nochri this much, a non-Jew this much for a Jew. He said, I don't have to pay you for getting such nachas, seeing me suffering like this. That's the way Titus, this grandson of Esau, Rosh Hashanah. It says the Gemara only worked for 30 days. After 30 days, the mosquito got already accustomed to the sounds of the hammer and went back to doing its thing and to driving towards his Titus crazy. Where's Titus? So, not the shot. But when the Panavizharov stood opposite, Titus. He also had a bug, a self-described bug. The, the, the Panavizharov was driven to rebuild. To, the Panavizharov was committed. He said, I'm the only one who's left from 170 plus Rabbanim in Lita, in Lithuania. Um, uh, he called himself the only survivor. 18 yeshivas were in Lithuania. And he didn't want to just rebuild his own, he wanted to rebuild all 18 of them. And he built, and he built, and he built. He built when he was in Panavish, and he built when he was in Eretz Israel. And he couldn't stop building. People asked him, a man in his 80s running around trying to generate support for another project, another project. And people say, hey, boss, you know, why already? Why? So you already have, you, you, you've done, take it easy. He says, what can I do? I'm addicted to building. He said, I have a weakness. I have to build. So he had this bug. And the only thing that caused the bug to become was the sound of a hammer. Was the sound of construction, of rebuilding type. That was what quieted the bug in his brain. But he never got used to it. He never got tired. After 30 days, it kept that. It kept that. It. And it had to keep coming, keep coming. That was the opposition to Titus. I think I'll read one more passage of the Gemara and draw one more homiletic comparison in the spirit of the Panavishraf. When Titus died, the Pinchas ben Rav said, Ani Haisi ben Gedeli Raimi, I hobnobbed amongst the leaders of Rome, Ukshemes Patsuas Meichei Matsu Baikitsipar Dura. So when Titus died, they did an autopsy, they opened up his head all the trouble that he had, and they found that the mosquito had grown into a small bird. Amr Abayi, excuse me, he had Kavu Kamayas. When Titus died, Amr Lehu, he gave an instruction. And the instruction was, Lichli Ulahu Gavra, take this man and burn him. Take me, he didn't say this, me, he didn't want to say it about himself. Burn him, cremate him. The Lindure Lekitme Ashev and spread his ashes over seven seas. He said, that's the only way I'm going to escape God. God has it in for me. I destroyed his base on English. How I destroyed his base on English, look what I did. 
look what I did. God, he chased me in the sea. He tortured me in my life. I don't want him to keep coming after me. So take my remains, turn them into ash, and spread them over seven seas. He'll never be able to get me. Titus had a nephew. His name was Unculus. Unculus of our time, Unculus. Unculus Sanger, Unculus the Kind. He's called. He was a nephew of Titus. When the Gemara says that Unculus and Titus would communicate, Titus would come to Unculus in a dream. And Unculus asked Titus, Dina da Ugabra Bamai, tell me what's going on with you? Amar Le Bamai the Pasik Anasha. He says, I'm getting what I was afraid of. Every day. They gather my ash, all of it, from the seven seas, the daimile, and they punish me more, the kolile, umavadule, ashabiyami, and then they scatter me again. That's Titus. Broken. Where are you? Where are you? You can't even find his ashes. Only the Rabbana in his desire to make things right, finds those ashes and puts them back together to just destroy them again. Just to destroy them again. And what was the Pana Vizharev? The Pana Vizharev also spent his life collecting ashes. The ashes that others tried to create. The ashes that others did create. The ashes of uh, the six million the ashes of all those precious Lithuanian Jews that the Panavizharov wanted to eternalize. And he, they who wanted to give us that there would be no trace left of the Jewish people. Panavizharov gathered the ashes and brought them back together. And he rebuilt, he rebuilt a people. We're going to say now two kinas. The first one, 16, Zuchar Asashra Asatzar Bafini. As always, you could say it in the Russian Kaidash, in the original, you could say it in, uh, in, in English. Uh, it starts with Titus. It's about Titus' destruction of the Beis Hamikdash. Again, it's Kina number sixteen, Tezayim, in whichever edition, in whichever edition you have. Think about it, mourn over the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash, the place of Hashem, and what was done to it. Because Hashem is no longer at home, no longer at home here. <speaking in Hebrew>